it u-shape and that is very very important also for the child to be uh, breathing well when i say breathing well it's breathing through their nose so when they breathe through their nose they're also getting a rhythmic way of oxygen into their body and when they're getting the rhythmic way of oxygen into their body their mind is going into deeper sleep and this is sleep as i've all uh, i've been mentioning to you sleep is a very very important phase of growth and development in children because it is in sleep a lot of thing is regulated in your child one of the major thing is their growth hormones they are regulated during your sleep and if you've been feeding your child with lot of good stuffs and you're questioning why is the child that's uh, that in spite of all this good Uh, food and uh, good organic freshly cooked meal if the child is not able to sleep re, uh, grow really well you will have to qu question the qu quality of sleep uh, when you look at quality of sleep one issue that is becoming a slow pandemic or slow epidemic um, in our country is sleep disordered breathing what is sleep disordered breathing sleep in sleep disordered breathing the child tends to have a lot of uh, uh, small uh, technical uh, small functional issues uh, during the sleep so few of the things that happens during um, sleep disordered breathing are um, in the night time the child repeatedly shifts position you know they are not sleeping in one position they are they are repeatedly changing positions uh, in the night time they are teeth grinding uh, in the night time they are also uh, having a, for pot, children who are potty trained after a certain age of 5 uh, years um, uh, after they are potty trained you still see that uh, they are a, they are not able to uh, bed they are not able to get up in the night for sleep or they are bed wetting in their sleep and they are also having snoring so in the sleep when you actually can hear the child snore or when you have hear the child have loud breathing um, then you should probably question if the child's sleep is not up to mark and in the daytime how does this uh, come in in the daytime uh, in the daytime some of the symptoms that you note are um, they are hyperactive and um, they have poor concentration they keep their mouth open they have repeated infections in spite of a good night sleep it becomes extremely difficult uh, to wake this child children in the morning it becomes difficult to wake them up in the morning and uh, uh, you also see that the child has uh, uh, issues with uh, uh learn cognition in the sense poor academic performance all these are said to be having an impact um on the child's quality of life and when you see these observation you should probably questioning if the child has sleep disorder breathing now what is breastfeeding has to have with sleep disorder breathing research now suggests there's lot of research especially from the stanford sleep medicine uh, suggests that children who have jaws that are narrow and that are backward has increased tendency to keep their mouth open while sleeping and when you keep your mouth open while sleeping you probably not nasal breathing your mouth breathing and it increases the risk of the child to develop these disorders which are called as sleep uh, breathing disorders or sleep disorder breathing so now having said all this what is uh, that we have to do in terms of breastfeeding so when we extensively breastfeed or ex exclusively breastfeed the child we are inducing the tongue to go up the jaw and when the tongue goes up the jaw uh, it is basically acting like an architect to make the jaw u shaped or wider shaped now what if um there are issues with breastfeeding so now we spoke about how breastfeeding as a process uh, pushes the tongue up the jaw and how as the tongue uh, tongue helps in constricting the jaw uh, to get straight teeth naturally and to um how the tongue helps in um, nasal breathing uh, proper rhythmic breathing and because of this rhythmic breathing how the children can go into deeper sleep and now big, uh, the deep sleep is very very important for a holistic well being of the child not just in the body uh, in their cognition in their memory in their growth and development and also in their behavior 
just like as parents when you know a child cannot really behave or uh, be a best of behavior when the child is hungry um, when the child is not sleeping well it's like hunger to their brain so you know when the stomach is empty children's behavior is really questionable so similarly when the brain is hungry to for oxygen when the brain don't get enough oxygen because of improper breathing it shows out as multiple system you know, symptoms and one of these symptoms is um, uh, disordered sleep and uh, all these collectively creates a lot of stress on the parents because it compromises the quality of life um, in the child and also the family so now going on to what all could happen so what is the solution is breastfeeding but what all could happen so there are issues that the mothers can face and there are issues that the babies can face now looking at what are the issues that the mothers can face there can be improper latching there can be poor uh, uh, milk production there can be flattened sorry flattened or inverted nipple the mothers can have um, certain kind of birth interventions actually leads uh, sorry actually leads the uh, bond between the mother and child or the breastfeeding uh, the breast milk secretion it can compromise and infections in mothers can also compromise when you look at infants infants born with certain syndromes um uh, infants born with cleft lip cleft palate or muscle hyp um, hypotonia and infants with birth trauma uh, when they have birth related trauma and um, my uh, one of the field that i really help the parents in breastfeeding is ankyloglossia when i say ankyloglossia in layman's term it's called as tongue tie so i'm going to take you through the world of tongue ties today so the just like it's a diet breastfeeding is a diet so i told you the benefits of breastfeeding how it directly impacts on getting a naturally straight teeth and healthy sleep in children but to the mothers who cannot uh, establish this breastfeeding i we are talking about various factors that happens um, for inability to establish breastfeeding there are factors with the mothers and the factors with the infants one of the factors with the infants is called tongue tie and the uh, layman term is called tongue tie and uh, uh, it is called as ankyloglossia in medical terms so what is tongue tie and why is it important before i go on to what is tongue tie i will have to tell you what is a frenum a frenum is a normal tissue that's attached um, that attaches one part of the uh, one part of the body to the other in cases of this is a frenum in case of uh, normal human being this frenum there helps the lips to be attached to the gums and this frenum here helps the tongue to be attached to the floor of the mouth now when do we call this as a tie when this frenum is more forwardly placed like this or when the frenum is these the first three pictures are very obvious that we can see but here when the frenum is little backwardly placed it's a little short or it's a little tight or it's something like this then it becomes extremely difficult for the tongue to move so this is a breastfeeding image a representative image for a breastfeeding to be established in the right way the tongue should be able to move at various portions to actually transfer the milk from the breast to inside but what happens when the tongue is not able to move in the right direction this is a normal moving tongue where the tongue can move out and up and establish a good latch but when the tongue cannot move in a right direction it actually what it does is um it makes the latch shallow and it makes it extremely difficult for the child to do the milk transfer so when you look at tongue it's not just important for breastfeeding it's important for nutrition speech sleep breathe cognition aesthetics and it also plays an improperly functioning tongue also plays a major role in the development of cavities so traditionally what we think is a tongue that moves out and in of the mouth you know if there is a mouth and if the tongue moves out and in or beyond the front teeth and lips it's an ideally functioning tongue however a tongue has more other functions one of the function is moving out and in the other function